Um, the two teams came together. Um, yeah. The man next door, so we can both think. Big more band in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. This is what's left of Pendleton Colliery. We're at the site of Pendleton Colliery, which was opened in the 1820s by a man called Mr. Fitzgerald. And it once uh, was the deepest coal mine in the world of its time, 3,000 feet. And uh, some of the notable um, people who worked here were the uh, railway engineer and his son, George Stevenson. George was the manager and his son Robert was consulting engineer. And there's nothing left now to commemorate where it was, just the entrance here. And it's quite sad really, we've got such historical history right on our feet. It closed in uh, 1939, in 1820, so it got quite a long life. From the faces extended under the River Irwell towards a place called Withercombe Place now. And one curious incident occurred in 1925 when four miners from this cholera were working under where Langworthy Road is now. And they were killed by what was called crump or convergence, which meant the floor rose to the roof while they were working in a district and crushed them to death. And that, that was right under the vicinity of Langworthy Road, Salford. Another interesting um, story concerning this site, Pendleton Colliery, was that when uh, the Wild West show of uh, Buffalo Bill came to Salford in about the 1880s, 90s, there was a gang called the Buffalo Bill Gang and it was made up of uh, young miners from this pit. They were a scuttlers gang who used to go around marauding around Salford fighting each other. And this was their base, the Buffalo Bill Gang from Pendleton Pit. This is all that's left of Clifton Hall cholera. Uh, we stood at the site of um, the former Clifton Hall cholera, which was located down Lums Lane. And um, I stood on the old Tipler Road that used to lead to the canal, the Manchester Boltonbury Canal. It came down from the workings here from Wheatsheaf Colliery in Newtown as well. And there's also a railway um, line that ran through here. One way it went to Clifton Junction, the other way it went to Eccles for a tunnel called Black Harry Tunnel. The uh, pit opened in 1820 and what people will remember it for is the disaster of 1885 when 178 men and boys were killed in an explosion. This pit was um, linked to Agecroft Colliery by a tunnel in the Doe Mine and the survivors of the explosion at the uh, pit were rescued by that tunnel. They actually were gained safety and a way out from the Agecroft shafts, which were located on, located on Agecroft Road. So it was a real lifesaver for them men and boys who were involved in the explosion. Now just above us here, where the railway line was, was the washer for Newtown Colliery, and it was still working up to 1955, processing coal from Wheatsheaf Colliery and Newtown Colliery for uh, putting into the coal wagons and being delivered to local industries. Right, we stood on the um, former Clifton Hall well, what was called the coal preparation plant and washery, where the coal was uh, separated from the rock and the stone. And then the coal was put into wagons, railway wagons obviously here, that went along the railway to either um, Eccles or to um, Clifton Junction. And uh, you can see it's just a waste ground now, there's not much to see. And this was running up until 1955, and it would have washed the coal from the various pits around the valley, Wheatsheaf and uh, Newtown up to then. And... Um, there's just absolutely nothing to see of the buildings, but there are, there's, there's lots of coal still along the floor and stone that was obviously from the, what was called the runner mine, where it was separated before washing. So there's a piece of coal that's probably been here something like 60 years. Uh, we're stood at the bottom of the Irwell Valley now, on the Clifton Hall site, and looking up were situated the pits of Newtown to the right, and to the left, or up above us, was Wheatsheaf Colliery. And how the coal was um, sent down the hill, or the brew, is by an endless chain with coal tipplers on it, little uh, buckets which would have been sent down on an endless chain and deposited into the washery here and the coal preparation plant. There's not much to see of that ra railway now or roadway. It's all overgrown and is, uh, there's just no identifiable colliery workings at all. 
But this is where it was deposited from the wheat sheaf pit, all their coal, and then put into wagons. I'm uh, stood on the former railway that led in one direction to Eccles through the Black Alley Tunnel and the other direction to Clifton Junction and then on to uh, Radcliffe and Berry. And this is a spot where the railways uh, met the coal and this is where they were loaded onto wagons and taken for industry or to the half to people's homes and all that's left of it are the sleepers which you can clearly see in the ground I mean this place hasn't been used for like 50 years over 50 years and it's quite clear to see exactly where the railways ran um, the railway closed in the early 60s after a disaster in the Black Alley Tunnel when it collapsed near Temple Drive and some people were uh, killed some, and many injured so that was the end of the uh, railway line to Eccles in Clifton Junction. And to my right in the distance you can see the slag heap from the uh, pits of the Irwell Valley. Certainly that, that was the age cloth tip there and further behind me was the tip from the um, workings of Clifton Hall. But you can see it's been reclaimed now for some reason. I don't know what they do, it's either landfill or something, but that is an artificial hill, it's not really there if you know what I mean. That's all the waste that's come out of the ground at Agecroft and the pits along here, it's quite a substantial amount that's come out and you can imagine the holes under the ground when you look at the size of that thing. Looking around the site, rummaging about, and uh, the former site Clifton Hall, we found a brick with Indley Green on it. Now this is one of the brick makers for the uh, coal board. So it's a historical artifact that we've found here, so we'll keep this. A number of uh, places made bricks for the coal board, and Indley Green was one of them. And they had their own workshops where they produced the bricks for use in the mines. So we found a good piece of architectural uh, historical legacy there, and a nice brick. This is what's left of Newtown Colliery. And there were three shafts at Newtown Colliery. This is uh, number three shaft at Newtown Colliery and uh, this was used as a water pumping station in the, uh, when the Agecroft Colliery was reconstructed to take the water from the uh, flow that went down the Irwell Valley and um, it's a very interesting um, note of history that this was once one of the training centres for the Bevan boys and one of the most famous Bevan boys that came here was Eric uh, Bartholomew later to be known as Eric Morecambe of Morecambe and Wise fame he trained here in the 1940s to become a collier for two years. The Bevan boys were conscripted during the Second World War to go down in the coal mines to uh, get the coal. And this is where my father started uh, his mining career in 1955 at Newtown Colliery. And uh, it's quite amazing to see really. There's just nothing to recognise what this was a coal site, colliery site. We can see the methane dispersal uh, unit on the top of the, above the shaft. But other than that, if you wasn't a trained miner or anyone to associate with mining, you wouldn't have a clue what that was about. Uh, we're still on Newtown Colliery, in the middle of an housing estate. And this was number one shaft, which was just next to Bolton Road. There's a very famous picture that the artist Harold Riley did. And it was taken from um, Station Road. It shows a really good view of the former headings here, the head, the head gear that was would have been right above my head here. Of course the, the, the shaft's been uh, capped now and it's overgrown with rubbish and debris. And nobody uh, walking past this site now would have any idea of what the industrial, industrial history of this area would be. This is all that's left of wheat sheaf colliery. We're at the um, site of Wheat Sheaf Colliery and this was uh, connected to Newtown Colliery. It closed in 1961 and this was the pit that my dad worked at before he transferred to Agecroft with a number of other men. And a lot of the men who actually went there would have worked in all the pits from a very early age. So Agecroft would have been their last pit they ever worked at and probably retired from this one. It's on the, the, there's a McDonald's on the site of it now and nothing much else in industrial units. And uh, my uncle Neville actually worked here as well that I found out not long ago. He worked here for two years, so well, it's got quite a bit of his stress. So my dad probably went down that shaft. That's now a methane dispersal unit, and it's also very famous for being on one of the Mitchell and Kenyon um, films that were found a few years ago. The cinematographers, the early ones, the 20th century, 
and it shows mine is leaving the colliery going on to Bolton Road after a shift and it's, a, it's, a bit, it's available to see on the internet if anyone's interested in looking at it.